I'm pleased to say that uh, perception about Hong Kong is uh, slightly changing. I have read some newspaper reports interviewing tech companies uh, overseas and in the mainland, and they, they normally would also say that, well, we, we are finding Hong Kong being quite serious about innovation and technology. So to answer your question, to attract people to really come and work with us in Hong Kong, you need policies. Uh, you need promotion. Harry, you recently really did something to shake up <laughs> a long-standing industry that you know is really the root of a lot of people's misgivings and, and discontent, and that's the cost of living property prices by introducing new rules on you know a, a vacancy, essentially a vacancy penalty or a vacancy uh, tax, and it's really caused activity to pick up in the market. Number one, wh wh why did it take so long? Why did it take to, uh, you know, to arrive at this you know, seemingly simple solution? Well, all the things that I have done on housing, and I will continue to do, uh, stem from my philosophy about housing and also land. I think housing is not a simple commodity because we are so in short demand, uh, in short supply of land. So the government has a role to play in providing uh, housing, decent housing, and affordable housing for the people of Hong Kong. So if housing is such a precious commodity right now because of the shortage, it doesn't seem right for people to have built these new flats and don't put them into the market. How do you navigate that delicate balance to make sure that those in the business of developing property, you know, release property, property onto the market in a timely fashion without hurting the secondary market. Hong Kong is the freest economy in the world and it's a highly competitive economy. So I'm not going to compromise that by going into other more stringent measures of regulating price in the private sector. But I can do more in the public sector. For families in Hong Kong who could not afford a private flat, then we could make a public flat for sale more affordable to these families. But Hong Kong's ability to connect oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to the rest of the world. And that, of course, is the high-speed rail yes. link. There are legal challenges still being mounted. Yes. Uh, you know, is number one, is, is September still on target, 100% in your mind, and the bridge? Yes. You know, it's almost ready to go. We're just yes. waiting for the okay and, and the green light. When are we going to... When are we going to benefit from these and what well, is it going to do uh, for Hong Kong? Well, these two important pieces of cross-boundary infrastructure, right. the Hong Kong Suhai Macau Bridge and the Guangdong Hong Kong, Guangdong Shenzhen Hong Kong High Speed, will, as you said, uh, enhance Hong Kong's connectivity to the mainland cities. Uh, I am very confident and very optimistic that we will be able to open both pieces of infrastructure within the next few months. There are, of course, the legal challenges as far as the um, high-speed train is concerned. But Hong Kong prides itself on the rule of law, so we will tackle those uh, in our usual manner. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.